Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. For me, Kaduna is home. I spent my formative years growing up in this town. I did my secondary school in St. John's College, Kaduna, now Remy College. And I must thank Your Excellency for the efforts ongoing to restore that college to its former glory. I thank you very much. In those growing up days, television played a major role in our education. In those days, the, tele uh, the only television station in this region was the RKTV, which was then transmitting black and white television. RKTV in those days ran daytime television specifically directed at schools. I remember vividly um, the particular year our main literature book was Shakespeare's Macbeth. And when we finished reading a chapter of Macbeth in the class, the next day, RKTV would relay that particular chapter to us. And that made literature come alive for us, and it was an unforgettable memory. There was synergy between RKTV and the schools. Uh, for us, literature was an unforgettable experience because of that, actually watching what you have read the previous day come to life on television. Um, we've come a long way from those days of um, television, from black and white, to color in uh, 1975 in Joss. Now we are in the digital era. The journey that has brought us here today, for us in black Africa, actually started 13 years ago. In 2004, a regional radio congress for Region 1 of the ITU was held in Geneva. This conference set out the technical parameters for the basis for a regional agreement for digital television uh, broadcasting in ITU Region 1. Two years later, in 2006, a second radio regional conference was again held in Geneva. This conference carried out the actual digital plan for ITU Region 1. These plans were based on spe specified digital standards for sound and television broadcasting, and it covered specific frequencies in the upper VHF bands and all of the UHF band. This conference also resulted in the signing of an agreement by all member states of ITU Region 1. One of the key elements of the agreement is that all analog transmitters in the UHF band must be switched off by June 17th of 2015. This, um, this is the agreement we refer to as the Geneva 2006 or GE06 agreement. Nigeria was a signatory to this agreement. So the agreement was not an imposition of the ITU, but it was a treaty that all of us, member states of Region 1 of the ITU, agreed to and we signed. After the World Radio Congress of 2007 in Geneva, the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, initiated the setting up of a presidential advisory committee on the transition from analog to digital terrestrial television broadcasting in Nigeria. This committee submitted its report to the federal government on 20th of June, 2009, with a very well-defined roadmap that would have seen Nigeria completing the digital switchover by 17th June, 2012. Unfortunately, because of political problems, government could not address the recommendations of the PAC report until late 2012. It was only on 20th of December 2012 that Digiteam Nigeria 
the Presidential Implementation Committee that is supposed to midwife the transition was finally inaugurated. The committee was inaugurated with no takeoff grant and there was no budgetary allocation in the 2013 federal budget for the transition. In going forward to approve a white paper for the transition, government took certain key decisions. First among these is that there will be a separation of functions in the broadcast industry. Broadcasters will be responsible for the content of their broadcasts, while signal distributors will be responsible for the transmission of the broadcast content to viewers at home. Government also approved that there will be a maximum of three signal distributors to be licensed by NBC, and that one of these signal distributors must evolve from the transmission infrastructure of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Because prior to this event, government had empowered NTA to expand its um, facilities to the nook and crannies of this country. And that's why in Kaduna, you have NTA in Kaduna, you had NTA in Zaria, you have NTA in Briningwari. For all these facilities not to go to waste, government decided that one of the signal distributors must evolve from those infrastructure to use those infrastructure as a signal distributor base. Um, then, the set-up boxes to enable existing analog television receivers to continue receiving digital transmission after the switchover should be assembled or manufactured in Nigeria. The reason for this being that Nigeria requires over 30 million set-up boxes to conclude the transition. And as at the time we commence this journey, a set-up set box was put at the equivalent of $20, which amounted then to $3,500. So do a little arithmetic, $3,500 times 30 million. You know that money is not small. And that would have been the capital flight going out of Nigeria just for importation of set-up boxes. So government decided this should be made locally to generate employment for our own youth and keep the money back home in Nigeria. And then uh, the standard for transmission, which was uh, um, made available by the technocrats, was also approved by the uh, federal government. Going forward, there were modifications to the Geneva 2006 agreement. Because between 2006 and 2012, there were tremendous development in digital processing, video compression, and uh, digital transmission formats. The telecommunications industry were therefore mounting a lot of pressure for the release of the upper spectrum to enable them to deploy mobile broadband in the, in, in, in the various countries. These pressures resulted in modifications to the GE06 agreement at the World Radio Congress of 2007 and World Radio Congress of 2012. Um, it resulted in the seeding first of 790 to 862 megahertz and then in 2012, 694 to 790 uh, frequency band to be seeded from broadcasting to uh, the other services, including the telecom industry. Because of this, the regional planning in 2006 had to be modified to now bring back all channel assignments above 694 uh, to between 470 megahertz and 694 megahertz. In the original planning, we used all of the UHF bands comprising of 470 to 862. Now with all the reductions, broadcasting only had exclusive use of 470 to 694 megahertz. So we now had to replan and bring back all those um, assignments back. To benefit from economy of scale, we developed a common ECOA standard for transmission, digital receivers, and set-up boxes for the ECOA subregion. And in line with the policy of government, two signal distributors, integrated television services, ITS, which emanated from the 
NTA uh, Transmission Infrastructure and Pinnacle Communications Limited, a private entrepreneur, were licensed and have been rolling out their terrestrial digital uh, transmission network. A total of 13 companies for the manufacture of set-top boxes have been approved. And to protect the STB manufacturers uh, in Nigeria, InView Limited was contracted by NBC, amongst other services, to provide conditional access uh, for the set-top manufacturers. If we did not do this, anybody can go outside the country and bring in uh, DVB T2 compliant um, set-top boxes, and they will erode the market of the set-top boxes being manufactured in Nigeria. So they needed to put in a conditional access to protect their market. So when you purchase a, a, a set-top box here, you have to call a call center and give them the I, uh, the unique identity number of your set-top box, which, in their, which is already domiciled in their database. If it's not one of those that emanated from the Nigerian factories, it will not be activated. So they have their protection. So if you like, go to Taiwan or China and bring uh, loads of set-top boxes. It will not work in Nigeria. The market is properly protected. An Abuja-based company, the outsource company, TOC, was contracted to operate that call center, and they have the um, job of actually uh, activating the set-top boxes. To get to Abuja, we did a pilot study in the city of Jos as a pilot city, and Plateau State as a pilot state. The digital switch-on in Jos was successfully launched by the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Alajilai Mohammed. On 30th of April 2016, on the platform of ITS. And then from there, with all the hands on learning we got from there, we, were, we made bold to go to Abuja and launch exactly one year today on the platform of um, Pinnacle Communications Limited. A company, Cable Channels Nigeria Limited, CCNL is appointed a signal aggregator to brand the free-to-air television channels as a free view bouquet on the terrestrial network. This they have done and branded it as a free TV. So you see on display uh, any of the boxes that you buy, free TV. That's their branding. CCNL is also currently utilizing SES satellites to backhaul all the regional and the national programs from Lagos on the, on the satellite of SES, and they deliver these um, regional and national programs to the head end of Pinnacle and ITS. At the just pilot, 15 channels of programming were on offer in the beginning, but after the Abuja launch, this has been increased to 20 channels of programming plus one information channel. For those people at home, your gateway to the new digital era is your set-top box. As of today, set-top um, uh, set box manufacturers have set up the assembly plant in Abuja, Idu industrial area, in Calabar export-free zone, in Lagos, in Ogun state, and in Oshun states. Plants have since commenced operation and have been generating a lot of employment for the youth of the country. In October 5th this year, one of the STB manufacturers, Gospel Technologies Limited, made history by commissioning a surface mount technology factory in Calabar. This effectively moves us from the era of assembly to actual manufacturing of set-top boxes in Nigeria and also other electronic devices. Moving forward, when we're done with the manufacture of um, set-top boxes to accommodate the existing analog TV sets, we should be able to now move into actual uh, manufacturing of digital television uh, receivers in Nigeria based on what they have set up. With the rollout in Ilori two days ago, 
and in Kaduna today, exactly one year after Abuja, we can be said to be solidly back on course. We therefore need, from here on, to work together and be more focused on the tasks ahead in concluding the transition. Kaduna has always played a leading role in the effective use of broadcasting in education, in agricultural development, in cultural expose. The rollout of digital television broadcasting here today presents a unique opportunity for the emergence of them a thematic programs for the education of the people, populace in this region. I therefore challenge you to seize this opportunity being presented to enhance the quality of life of the people of this region. I thank you very much. Thank you very much.